Fridays are awesome. I'm Carl Azuz. Welcome to CNN Student News. First up, it looks like the auto industry's big three, GM, Ford, and Daimler Chrysler, may have to wait to see if they can get help from the U.S. government. Yesterday, we mentioned a controversial proposal to give part of the $700 billion bailout to the struggling automakers. But a leading Senate Democrat says that doesn't seem likely to happen anytime soon. I one would like to see us do something. Right now, I don't think the votes, I don't know if a single Republican is willing to support, uh, and you've heard Senator Shelby publicly speak out on his opposition to doing anything in the automotive area. So I'd want to be careful about bringing up a proposition that might fail. Uh, in light of the fact the authority exists, and under an Obama administration, there seems to be a greater willingness to deal with the issue. Okay, Senator Dodd was talking about Republican Senator Richard Shelby, who said that the auto industry's struggles aren't a national problem, but its own problem caused by its own mistakes. A spokesman for Republican Senator Mitch McConnell says his party is willing to help automakers, just not how the Democrats are proposing, by using money intended to help the financial industry. The stock market, meanwhile, took Wall Street on a roller coaster ride yesterday, but it ended with a 552 point gain for the Dow Jones average. That is good news because the Dow, as you know, indicates how the overall market is doing. The market made its climb after dropping earlier in the day, and by closing, it had gained about $700 billion in value. All people should be free to worship as they see fit. That was President Bush's message yesterday to an interfaith conference at the United Nations. The goal of the meeting is to bridge the differences between religions and cultures. Starting today, President Bush is hosting a meeting of world leaders to discuss the global financial crisis. Elaine Quijano gives us a preview of the president's position on how to turn things around. As he prepares to host an international financial summit, President Bush said America would continue to lead in the global economy. The world will see the resilience of America once again. But his comments come on the heels of more evidence that right now, America's bleak economy is leading in the wrong direction. Last week, more than half a million Americans filed new claims for unemployment insurance, the highest level since the weeks after September 11th. Amid the continued downturn, the president traveled to Federal Hall in the heart of Wall Street to argue that recent government action is slowly making a difference. Credit markets are beginning to thaw. Businesses are gaining access to essential short-term financing. A measure of stability is returning to financial systems here at home and around the world. But some say investors are looking beyond the current president, who has roughly two months left in office. But with President-elect Barack Obama steering clear of the summit and some European leaders pushing for global financial regulation, the outgoing president is defending Western capitalism and free market principles, even as he acknowledges parts of the system are broken. And the answer is not to try to reinvent that system. It is to fix the problems we face. Every Friday, we put your news knowledge to the test with 10 questions about some of the stories we've covered throughout the week. Can you get a perfect score? Head to our website and check out the free news quiz to find out, but don't go yet. One of this week's questions is from our next story. If you were looking for a funny video clip, you might end up on YouTube, where users can post almost anything. I myself have been a victim. But U.S. troops aren't allowed to use YouTube. So the military has come up with an alternative that gives personnel serving overseas and their families the chance to communicate via online video. Alina Cho dials up the details on TroopTube. Hey, we want to give a shout out to 3rd Brigade 8 Troop 133 Cav. Joy Osmond never thought she'd be able to talk to her husband serving in Iraq face to face. Well, almost. Thank you for all that you are doing and we can't wait to see you. This is TroopTube, the U.S. military's answer to YouTube. The site is new. There are personal messages, music, even a heartfelt welcome from General David Petraeus. Saying thanks for your tremendous work. Joy says knowing her husband can log on, see her, and post videos himself takes some of the loneliness away. Knowing that he sees, hey, th everything's normal back at the house. I don't have to worry about the family. I can see what they're doing. Their dad is back with them now, but says when he redeploys, he'll feel like a piece of him is still home. 
Well, instead of just knowing that, you know, your daughter graduated or had a lead in the play, you can actually see it and hear it, and it, uh, it makes a difference. A year and a half ago, the military blocked troops from accessing video sharing sites like YouTube. On TroopTube, all videos are pre-screened to make sure they're tasteful and don't compromise national security. Be safe and come home fast. We love you. For Kristen and her husband, Sergeant First Class Chris Valverde, the videos mean the kids won't forget their dad. Christmas opening presents, birthdays, the first softball game, um, my son losing a tooth. Um, just events that he definitely would want to share with them almost puts him there. Definitely the next best thing to being home physically. The only problem from Joy Osmond's standpoint... <laughs> they picked a terrible spot to stop the video. And I was like, oh no, that's terrible looking. <laughs> Today's shout out goes out to Mr. Bailey's social studies classes at Hemeter School in Saginaw, Michigan. Which of these would you find in the ancient city of Rome? Is it the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, the Parthenon, the Sphinx, or the Colosseum? You've got three seconds. Go! The Colosseum opened its doors in 80 A.D., and it's still standing in Rome today. That's your answer, and that's your shout-out. But after a couple thousand years, the Colosseum... Looks a little more rundown than when it first opened, but that's the only way to experience this famous building, right? Wrong! Thanks to a new virtual reality exhibit, you can see the Colosseum and all of ancient Rome in its original condition, sort of. Alessio Vinci takes us on the tour. What the glorious Roman Empire looked like in the old days has been pretty much left to your imagination. Until now. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Colosseum. Just a stone's throw away from the real Colosseum. Step this way, folks, for your chance to peek into the Temple of Vesta. Entertainment and history merged into a 30-minute interactive journey. This loose stone should give us an undisturbed view. This is all fake. Starting with a replica of today's excavations, visitors can take a virtual tour of ancient Rome with some surprises. You are back in time. You are smelling the history. You actually reproduce the smells as well. We do. You can smell the mold. You can see a little uh, powders coming from the top. You can hear water going around your sides. And you can even hear the squeaky noise of uh, animals going around. Rats. Animals. Rats. You're talking about the <laughs> you rats. Know, you actually... I will leave the surprise for the <laughs> people that are coming. <laughs> you, you actually use real rats? I can't tell you, you know. <laughs> Only see with the glasses. 3D technology allows visitors to walk through the hustle and bustle of Roman life. It's the poorest part of Rome, whereas ordinary mortals live. Brave gladiators, give us a day to remember! The sensation is like walking through a virtual time machine. There is a real thing. Olivia Menaguale is one of the partners in the project, but also an art historian. So we're just an announcement to the classic tour that you should do, because here, that's why we are just 80 meters away from the Colosseum. We don't want to be detached from the real thing. We want to be part of it. And through this wireless device, actually, the, the audio is in eight different languages, right? Chinese, Russian, German, French, Spanish, English, right? Italian, Italian. at the moment. Arabic, maybe? In yeah. The future. Yeah. Of course, would be the next one possibly. Most of it, though, doesn't really need a translation. And it's a thumbs down! It's death to Alessio Vinci, CNN, in ancient Rome. All right, and before we go, you guys are going to love this. It's a dog who's standing on her own two feet, because that's how many she has. This hound was born with only her hind legs, but that doesn't seem to keep her down. In fact, it looks like just the opposite. Faith is her name. Her owners use the dog's favorite food to teach her to stand up for herself. Right now she can run or hop just as well as any other four-legged friend. All right, we're done dogging her, and we're out of time. You guys have a great weekend. For CNN Student News, I'm Carl Aziz.